Recently, I recruited a scene from Arcane without spending any money, trying to get as close as possible to the look from the original. I've learned so many new techniques during this process that Fortige, the studio behind Arcane, used to create the show, but I couldn't cover a lot of them in my first video, so now I'll answer 25 of your questions to give you a deeper look into how I created this project, how you can do the same, and how my theory for what Arcane's secret sauce actually is has changed after finishing this project. Question number one. How long did it take to create the animation? Around 360 hours. Maybe a little bit less, maybe a little bit more. Depends on how you do the math, I guess. Can you create another scene? Maybe even an original that doesn't exist in the actual animation? I could, but uh, doing these kind of things takes a long time. So by the time I would have finished the second animation, maybe in two months, uh, everybody probably would have moved on and nobody would care anymore. Uh, if, you know, if I'm wrong, then you can uh, let me know, I guess, in the comments and maybe I'll reconsider. What version of a blender did you use? Most of the things that I created was in Blender 4.2. The only thing that has not been rendered or done at all in Blender 4.1 was the rendering of the hair. The hair is very stylized in the show, right? So I wanted to use Eevee, which is a more, more used for stylized rendering. But the problem was the 4.2 version has been updated to look more realistic. So that's where I went with 4.1, but everything else has been done in 4.2. Can you make a course or offer one-on-one -on -one lessons? Well, you know, I like creating animations. I like creating videos. Unfortunately, that takes too much time to also then create, uh, you know, full-on courses, for example. I also just, I think, generally prefer to create projects to inspire people rather than to teach people how to do stuff, like, concretely. Um, so yeah. What was your modeling process for Fishbones, the rocket launcher? The rocket launcher was basically just a simple hard surface modeling workflow. So trying to see what kind of shapes it consists of, the most basic shapes you could come up with, and then you add and attach and edit until you basically reach the end point. The head was a bit different since it's kind of organic. I wanted to start with only like uh, edges and I drew edges basically around all the most important features that you had like this, you know, this kind of um, edge cage. And once the shapes, you know, just with these very simple edges looks right, you can then um, fill the rest in to create the actual 3D shape. As you might notice at this point also, these first questions are pretty simple, but we're going to get more and more complex and more and more interesting, I think, as we go through these. But yeah. Let's continue. What are your PC specs? Um, well, pretty simple questions. I think you can you know, just see it right here, I guess. What was your process for Jinx's model? Usually when I create characters, especially from scratch, I like to start with the body block out by just using, once again, just like the rocket launcher, simple shapes to block out all the you know basic parts. And then I use sculpting to refine these body parts, basically to merge them together to make it look a bit more organic. And then once that is done, I go into retopology to basically clean up the geometry. With retopology, you can make sure that the model is ready to then afterwards be animated and then once you know everything has been cleaned uh, i then started by modeling the outfit I then did the hair. First, I just created the mesh hair, which I then wanted to later convert into hair curves. And once the hair looked at least good enough to continue, of course, you know, once the model is done, the rigging, of course, happens. I um, created then something interesting. I created a even lower res version of my uh, model that then is basically optimized for the animation workflow. I also then added some shape keys to kind of refine some of the expressions, for example. And then, of course, the last few steps that were missing are the texture painting and and the refining, which is mainly just, um, what is refining? Wait, what? <laughs> Speaking of them, can you go more in depth into shape keys? Shape keys are basically optional deformations you can apply to your model. If you, for example, want your character's finger to grow for some reason, you could add a new shape key. This shape key now then saves the edits that you do on the mesh. So once you go out of edit mode, you can then use the slider of the shape key to either do the deformation or you can not do it. And it's just generally like a useful way to have more control over the model once that has already been finished basically. Question number nine, can we get the Jinx model? Hmm, how convenient that you ask. <laughs> I just released all the assets that I made for this project on my Patreon shop. So if you wanna get them, you can get them in the first link in the description. This includes the Jinx model, of course, the rocket launcher, and also the custom hair system, which we're gonna talk a little bit more about uh, in a second, I guess. Did you use a drawing tablet? Yes, I did. I always have my drawing tablet right here. Ooh. 
Wow. <laughs> it's a XP Pen Deco LW. I had it for a while now and I still love it. I don't really need anything bigger. So uh, yeah. What was your hand painting process? First, you get Yuku Pen because that is kind of like a very central for how I did it. So you can just basically select, hey, this area is supposed to be this color. This area is supposed to be this color. And then you can also afterwards bake basic shading without having to do anything yourself. So I used ambient occlusion and baked that. And then I used um, pointiness or something similar to create like these this edge wear on the edges. So after all of that has been done, I you know do a rough sort of fixing of all those bakes and all those basic colors. And then afterwards, once that is done, I do a bigger detailed refining of all the shapes, adding more details, refining the shapes, adding better shadows and stuff, stuff like that, which you know takes the longest, but also is what makes the model look you know, as good as it does. Can you explain Arcane's art style? Well, yes, I can. <laughs> I actually have a few notes that I can show you right now about the style of the show when I watched it. Fun fact, I watched it the first time before I started this project, so two or three years after it actually came out, okay? <laughs> but I think the main focus of the art style is being very handcrafted and really embracing imperfectness. So no character, for example, is ever symmetrical. All the lines in the show, for example, are never perfectly straight. Yeah, everything is very, very imperfect. I think the most important one here is that it's not necessarily about realism but more about the perception of how it looks so if something looks better because there's a light there that wouldn't really be there that's fine because it looks cool the main focus for this show i think especially was just to make it look as good as possible which you kind of also do in you know like painting an artwork it's not going to be perfectly drawn lighting and stuff so that's what they wanted to kind of capture in their uh, 3d or cg style as well how did you actually create your custom texture paint brushes yes <laughs> of course blender only has one uh, paintbrush so I had to make my own to uh, have a little more range in what I can do in texture painting the way I basically did it is just you know I just drew them in Photoshop I have just like a square like 500 by 500 or whatever or 1000 and then I tested them out in blender to see if it works how I want them to work you can also of course use custom Photoshop brushes that you can download as long as you just get the square texture that um, you need basically to import in Blender to create those brushes. Can you give more details on your 2D VFX workflow? The 2D VFX in Arcane have been made by grabbing the 3D render or the CG render and then basically you know, just drawing on top of that. But instead of doing it in an external program, I wanted to do it in Blender. So I just grabbed my grease pencil object, basically a way to draw, you know, in 3D space and put it in front of the camera so that I can then basically draw in front of everything else. Then I basically try to analyze how many layers I need for this animation to look good and so I can then export these layers individually for compositing later because sometimes these layers interact with each other as well. And then I basically just, you know, copy the original because <laughs> in the, the best version of it already exists so I just need to copy it. Who are you and how did you learn all this? Well, hello, <laughs> I am uh, Nicholas and I have been doing this for five years, I think almost six years. Started with, uh, you know, just learning the basics in Blender, then discovered sculpting. And then from there, I kind of just built more and more knowledge about how to create characters, how to animate characters, how to do environments around the characters and just expanded my knowledge more and more and more over these years until now, basically, and where I, you know, was able to create this. I think for the texture painting what helped me was that I also before I went into 3D basically just like practiced drawing and painting for like two or three years before that but in terms of 3D I started um, five to six years ago. If someone knew nothing about this how could they start learning this? First thing first Blender is a very very hard program to get into but that is also good because then um, once you get into it and once you actually learn it it's going to get more and more easy the more you do it. Start with a beginner tutorial and then stick to one modeling technique first and see if you can create all kind of various things with that technique and then once you have a modeling technique that you're comfortable with you can then expand into more stuff and i think the most important thing is just to always analyze the projects that you do and then keep in mind basically for one or two things you can then improve in the next project and then focus on those in the next project that you do any tips for people who want to create their own animations i think the most important thing first of all is to learn the 12 principles of animation these are kind of like sort of everything you need to know to create appealing animations and once you kind of practice those and have them in you it's just about kind of um creating projects aim 
for good enough, but not perfect or even very, very good. Quantity over quality is especially important for when you begin creating a project. And then sometimes you can put in like projects that are focused on making this look, look as good as possible. But in my opinion, most of the learning comes from doing just more projects. And then one more thing I think I would recommend is, especially if you work alone, what kind of deadline style works best for you? Some people say, hey, this is the point where I need to stop this animation. And after that point, I will not work on this any longer. So it has to be done before this. For me, for example, I can be a bit more loose with my deadline. But what you never want to have is to run into kind of like this perfectionism spiral where you just never finish a project and then get burned out on it. Number 18, how does the custom hair system work? So the main idea behind the system is basically that you create a mesh and then the edges of that mesh or the structure of that mesh kind of defines a path that then the generated hair can basically follow. And then once these hair curves are kind of following, you know, the general shape, you can then style them a bit more, giving them a bit more randomness with a noise modifier that I basically apply to it. And then you can style it even more after the system basically with Blender's internal hair modifiers to give it a more unique style and more realistic style. So first of all, create a mesh, then use that mesh to guide newly generated hair. And then, you know, use uses hair modifiers to style it a bit more. How did you make the hair look so close to the original, not speaking of the shader? I think because of this hair system that I created, it actually made the creation of the hairstyle pretty simple because all I really had to do was first model the hair with just simple sort of mesh tubes. And then I can just use the system, apply it to all these mesh tubes to replace it with actual hair curves. I think one of the most important things to make this actually look really good were those hair modifiers because they, for example, add like clumping, they put some hairs together, they create more strands. It adds some more realism into them. And then the last thing, a quick tip, I guess, <laughs> if you want to create that hair style yourself is to use the Kuwahara shader in the compositor. This shader kind of tries to simplify flat areas and tries to enhance or keep like contrast the areas. It isn't perfect, so it blurs some areas, but you know, at least it made it look uh, a little bit more like the original. What was your compositing process? Ooh, the compositing process you want to know about? Okay. <laughs> so my idea for compositing was basically to grab as many layers of different information that I could get from Blender and then move them all over into DaVinci Resolve so I could then combine them all together to create the final composited animation. And the way you can get all the information is through separate render layers. There were basically two kind of render layers or render passes. One of them was the actual scene, so the colors or the shading and whatever. And then the other ones were kind of utility layers, which basically helped me create certain effects like the glowing in the eye highlights. These kind of utility layers help with that because then I don't have to do that manually in with masking, for example. I can just do that automatically and by combining all of these together, including then also, of course, effects in DaVinci Resolve itself. Combining all of that together, I created basically the final animation. Speaking of them, what are render passes? Render passes are basically all the information that the renderer basically computes. All of those are different layers that are then combined to create the final visible render that you usually see. But you can also export those individually and then put them, for example, how I did it, into DaVinci so you have more control over how they're being combined. What kind of problems and mistakes did you encounter during this project? Um, I think the biggest <laughs> sort of mistake but also blessing for this whole project was the custom hair system. I love that I have it now, but it also was horrendous to create. <laughs> the other one then was flickering during the animation, during the final animation. I don't know why it happened, but while I was rendering the animation and then I put it all together, I saw in the end that some frames, the shadows in the first scene just didn't render. And then the last one would be the camera, trying to recreate the camera was like kind of like a struggle for me. So I think the biggest problem I had with that was when Jinx kind of pulls the rocket launcher up on her shoulder. Older. I actually had to scale up the rocket launcher just to make it as big as it looks in the real shot just because my camera wasn't set up exactly how the original was. Number 23, if you had to redo the project, what would you do better the second time? So I think the hair can be done much better. If you compare my version to the original, there's still like some kind of magic that I still haven't figured out at all. Like I'm trying to look at it and I just don't know how they do 
this kind of hair. Another one I think that could be better is my compositing workflow. I think there's still a lot that I can improve there. I had like a lot of sort of glitches happening, which I was able to fix. But you know, if I didn't run into them at first, then I wouldn't have to deal with them at all. And the last one I think is the rig. The rig works, but for example, small details like her belt or her boots. I rigged them at first, but then they glitched out like crazy. So those things, for example, you can't animate now, except if you add those things yourself. Uh, but that would be definitely also something that I would have wanted to improve if I had, uh, I guess, a little bit more time for this. Would you want to work on Arcane Season 3? Uh, no. <laughs> I like uh, I like animations. I like creating animations. But I think what always keeps me away from bigger productions or being like part of a team is I love being part of the entire process. And especially for big productions to make it as efficient as possible, every person has their expertise that they're like proficient at. They know exactly what they're doing. And if I would, for example, join one of those, if I had like a sort of lead position i would look over the people that do the things but i wouldn't do it myself which i like doing and if i was a like an animator for example i could only really do like a, one animation and do that for like eight weeks i wouldn't be able to then say oh but right now i want to work on shading or whatever nope there's another person that does that so i really like working on the entire process and being able to see if i can create everything by myself and because you can't really do that in big productions it doesn't it kind of keeps me away from you know doing those myself and now for the big one what is Fortiche's secret sauce? So I said in the beginning that there's like the secret that I've changed my mind on when after the project was basically done, which was this point right here. After I finished the project, I spoke with someone that told me that the way that Arcane actually lit their models has not been made in the 3D scene, but what they actually did is they rendered another render layer that I haven't rendered, which is like a normal pass. And this allows you to do the lighting straight in the compositing itself it sounds kind of crazy and um i think i i think i believe it <laughs> it looks very believable i think still that they have also used 3d lighting so from the actual 3d scene but i think that is how they mainly did everything and how they had so much control over everything if you want to see the original person that figured all of this out it was uh sunny is online i'm going to put a link to their video in the description i highly recommend watching that video because it's really really interesting but that is, I think, now the secret sauce that I alluded to, not only in the beginning of this video, but also in my first video. Hopefully these answers could give you a little bit more insight in how I made this project. And uh, yeah, if you want to see more of what I do, you can see it right here. Wow. <laughs>